Fly a fair nation. Fly a fair nation. Thank you for tuning in to the Pointless Talks podcast. As it is Pride Month and this is a podcast for gay Caribbeans, I have to talk about the islands that are participating in Pride. So last weekend, despite the backlash and attempts at sabotage, St. Croix of the U.S. Virgin Islands successfully carried out their Pride Parade event. They had a live video feed of it on Facebook, which I watched, and despite everything that happened, it went off without a hitch. Now, I tell you all the time that I like to look at the comment sections and see like what people have to say about the things that are posted because that's usually where you get the most entertainment be it good or bad and as you could imagine for Caribbean island something gay is happening in the island openly and there were very there was ignorance there's people talking about the devil and you know what kind of life are we living and what are the days and you know Jesus is coming and all of this because some people wanted to be happy and out and walk down the street so there was that but there was also quite a few people not necessarily to my surprise because I know with ignorance there's always somebody who supports and believes in you know either they're for it or they're just indifferent to it so there was also quite a few people that were like okay just let them live their life or they were happy about it proud of the island all of these things so it was all over the board and it was just something good to see because you know like I said all the time like you're from the Caribbean there's a lot of ignorance and there's a stigma against homosexuality as a whole so seeing that they actually put forth the effort to you know organize this and make it happen and even though like the beginning of the feed you saw like they damaged a lot lot of their um setups and everything there were things in the street like debris and all types of stuff that people were trying to ruin the event for them before it even started but like I said it went off without a hitch they still carried on with pride and they did their walk and everything and everything was cool I haven't heard anything crazy about you know after effects or anything of the sort but the feed was good you know there was a couple glitches but I believe it might still be up on their account for you to watch if you want to but it was it was good you know what I'm saying I saw quite a few banners um one of the banners I saw said women's coalition of St. Croix um there was another one that said um no one is free while others are oppressed which is very much true um there it was just like any other pride you know rainbow flags flying people in their rainbow tutus rainbow shirts all of the things that come from pride there was people of all races because it is the Caribbean so you know black white Asian etc everybody's in the mix and everybody's having fun (laughs) so following that up Barbados Pride is next week they have like almost two week long list of events going on in honor of Pride it starts next week Wednesday on the 20th which is a launch then on Thursday the 21st they have a human rights forum the 22nd professional networking on that Saturday there's a health and wellness fair the 23rd oh there's three events on the 23rd sorry there's a health and wellness fair then there's a sex positive workshop workshop and a variety show then the sunday there's two events there's a pride parade and a beach lime then i think they take a break for two days monday and tuesday i didn't see any events for that then wednesday there's a movie night thursday there's open discussion the 29th is an all-inclusive party and then the 30th which is a saturday is a pride party so if you're in barbados you plan on visiting barbados you know from the 20th of june to the 30th there's a bunch of things for you to do (laughs) so there's that um jamaica pride is coming up which is the end of july leading into the first week of August obviously and there's a party in Canada that's being held as a fund right for the, <laughs> as a fundraiser for it um for J flag all proceeds go to J flag and y'all go hear me talk about pride Jamaica pride for psh, a month and a change two months up until it comes don't judge me I'm Jamaican leave me alone <laughs> but the party in Canada it's in Toronto it's called dance all nice again it's a fundraiser for J flag and it's Saturday June 30th so if you're in Toronto you you know, come through, whatever. It's an 80s, 90s, present day dance hall. They also have hip hop, soca, and R&B. And there's three different DJs playing DJ Black Cat, DJ Prestige, and DJ Pleasure. I don't read flyers. <laughs> Sorry if I just sound real mundane reading this, but yeah, that's what the thing is as far as... um pride goes they also have a long list of events for jamaica pride also it's from july 31st they have the opening ceremony then sports day on the 1st of august is afterwards there's a lime saturday i'm talking about saturday i don't know what day that is (laughs) august 2nd is a trade show and conference august 3rd is a day of service and concert the 4th is health and wellness walk and a family fun day August 5th is a breakfast party and August 6th is a beach picnic. So if you're in Jamaica during those dates, want to go support, go right ahead. If you know any more Pride events happening in the islands or any that passed that I missed, feel free to let me know. You can email me at pointlessquestions at gmail.com or slide in my DM, tweet me, etc. I'm open to, you know, 
all the informations and things. You know, I remember I spoke to um, Glenn Roy, who is a member of J Flag, and how he talked about their pride events and how, you know, nothing like as extreme as you would think, especially being in Jamaica and everyone says that we are the most homophobic place on earth. <laughs> but the fact that it can go off in Jamaica without a problem and the fact that all these other islands are following suit or leading the way, whichever way it is, I haven't looked into who did it first or anything of the sort, but the fact that these islands are doing it is a really big deal because I'm Jamaican. I didn't even know about this till was it last year, the year before that Jamaica was doing part and they've been doing it for longer than that. And I'm sure some people from these other islands probably didn't even know that they were doing it or are aware that they have organizations that, you know, will put this together for LGBTQ community, etc. Because like I said, it's the Caribbean and there's a stigma that they're all homophobic and it's not going to accept you, but you know, it's a new day coming, and thankfully it is going in a good direction. Of course, you know, there's still going to be people that are ignorant and still have their closed-minded views of homosexuality and everything else, but, you know, things are changing, and people are coming around, so I'm really excited about this. I mean, it's June, happy Pride, and, you know, just living in truth. I see a lot of people posting their Pride stuff, because Pride is going on all over the country and other places, and I'm seeing, like, all, it's just... It's just awesome. I just love it. Um, so last episode, I talked about Netflix. <laughs> uh, Luke Cage is coming back. <laughs> I'm not even ready because I lied to y'all. I did not watch Sense8. It is the last season and I'm not quite ready for it to end yet. <laughs> but I did finish watching Black Lightning and I'm actually kind of surprised at how it went because it took some twists and turns that I definitely did not expect. And I'm the asshole that's like interpreting how the show is going. And I'm like, I know what words they're going to use because I really feel like it's dumb cliche. Like the show is corny. It's corny. But I, I like it at the same time, you know, for the culture, black people, all that good stuff. But ah, watch it, watch it, watch it, watch it. It's it's a good show. <laughs> but um, Tuesday of this week, the Breakfast Club had a guest that um, was talking about monogamy. For some reason, I, I don't even remember how the topic came up, but he's, I think he was like 31 or he's in his early 30s. And he said blatantly that monogamy to him is taboo and overrated. Now, you know, of course, they asked him, oh, who hurt you? Like, why do you feel this way? Whatever, whatever. And his response was basically that every married couple, or rather, he doesn't know of any successful, happy marriages. So whether they're unhappy, they're unhappily married, or they're divorced. And I guess he's jaded by that. I don't, you know, I mean, I can understand it. But at the same time, it's kind of like you got to give people a chance if you find somebody that you feel like, you know, whatever. But I noticed that he also said something to the extent of like, you know, you can find someone and settle down and spend the rest of your life with, but he just has a thing against marriage or whatever. Now, I have views. <laughs> I have views and opinions because I've been seeing a lot of things lately where people are like, oh, your marriage goals of, you know, your grandma and grandpa's 50-year relationship are unrealistic because your grandmother stayed because she couldn't afford to financially support herself while your grandfather did this. And, you know, all these indiscretions and things of that nature. Granted, some of that may be very true, and that might be part of the reason why these older relationships stay together for so long because, you know, one person was the sole breadwinner of the household while the other person was just there to cook, clean, rear children, <laughs> or whatever the case is. But I feel like that's not necessarily a negative thing to have. Now, my biggest thing as far as marriage goes is two adults that know what they're signing up for and are in agreement with what they're here for. You know what I'm saying? Like open line of communication, respect, and two consenting adults, basically. Like if we decide that, hey, one of us isn't going to work and one of us is going to stay home and do this or whatever, people put such a low value on homemaking that it looks like, oh, she's not doing anything with her life. Or even he, because they are stay-at-home dads, oh, they're not doing anything with their life. Duh, you got to wake up. <laughs> get the kids ready get food ready get lunch ready do dinner clean up like there's a lot that goes into keeping a home it's not just you know 
I just rolled out of bed this morning and that's that. Because at the end of the day, whether you go to work and you leave the house and, you know what I'm saying, you come home after eight hours or nine hours or whatever the case is, you come home and your house looks the way that you want it to look. Someone did that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It wasn't a tooth fairy. It wasn't, you know, it just magically happened. Like, it takes work. So... I feel like there's this level of disrespect where it comes to homemakers. So it looks like, okay, I wouldn't want to be that. So, you know, there's a lot of independent women out there who feel like I don't need a man, but you're doing everything by yourself. That shit gets tired. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So that's one side of it, right? You don't want to live up to the goals of I have to be in a relationship with this person. I have to stay with this person because I can't support myself, et cetera, et cetera. But it's not just that. There's also the object, like the the idea that <laughs> monogamy ruins relationships. And there's this quote that I keep seeing that says something like, the expectation of monogamy is what ruins relationships or something to that extent. And a part of me believes in that, but at the same time, eh. Because <laughs> some people think of, you know, like polyamorous relationship as I get to do this, but you have to be faithful to me. Whereas that's not necessarily how that goes. Like a lot of people keep seeing polyamorous relationships and they, they're like, oh, you know, that's cool. Like you got two girlfriends (laughs) or something like that or whatever the case is. And it's more than just that. It is an understanding between two consenting adults that, hey, we are opening up our relationship. We're opening up our bedroom to another person. Now it has to be a mutual understanding, like I said, two consenting adults that know what they're doing because one person can't be all the way down for it and the other person's like, "Mm, I'm doing this for you. That's never going to work, ever, ever, ever. Polyamory, same difference. If you're having an open relationship, if you're swinging, all of that. There's so many different categories of things that, you know, work for some that don't work for others, but comes back to the basis of two open, honest, consenting, mature adults that enter into a situation or relationship (laughs) and they have an understanding of what it is they both want now before you can even get all the way to marriage and all this other fun stuff you got to think about like when you get into a relationship with someone like y'all be trying to put people in relationships that don't want to be in relationships or (laughs) trying to you know what i'm saying like change people from wanting a relationship to not wanting a relationship you know the signs you see the signs from jump like y'all like to ignore these signs and think oh you know i'm a good up good up we can't make him change in mine are you know what i'm saying if i lay it down right she might like no <laughs> you know what i'm saying you put a bitch in a house and you give her some good sex and you think that's gonna make no if she doesn't want to be in a relationship eventually she's going to leave eventually he is going to leave no matter how good it is no matter how much money you spend on them no matter how much trips how many dinners how many dates None of that shit doesn't matter if the person genuinely does not want to be in a relationship. Now, it could be a case like this person who feels like none of that shit works. None of that's going to last or I've been hurt before. I don't trust nobody or, you know, whatever the case is, I'm young, wild and free. I don't want to settle down right now. Whatever the case is, people are entitled to their opinion and their choices. You just have to listen to what they're saying, even if they're not directly verbally saying it you know what i'm saying you can see body language you can see the way people move you can you know what i'm saying you know what it looks like when somebody wants to be with you right okay so bomb so now we get back to the whole idea because they also said they did talk about monogamy on the show they talked about you know <laughs> having open relationships and i remember there was a time where people were like turning up their noses because of the idea that will smith and jada pinkett had were swingers now that's not anybody's business they married they grown (laughs) if they want to open up their bedroom to other people there are clubs for this (laughs) you know what i'm saying do your googles it's perfectly normal you know there's uh what's her name sydney in atlanta that be doing those sex parties and stuff like that the atl orgy shit like whatever floats your boat just make sure you're safe always talk about this you know use your protection and things of that nature get tested all of that but Back to, you know, marriage, like, okay, monogamy. It's cool. It's cool for some people. But some people have this unrealistic idea that once you get, not even all the way to marriage, if you're boyfriend and girlfriend, girlfriend and girlfriend, boyfriend and boyfriend, once we enter under a, ti- under a title, you can't find anybody else attractive. How realistic is that? 
Like, so nobody is fine no more. Nobody else is cute. Nobody you can see and be like, oh, like, you know what I'm saying? That's crazy. And there's, <laughs> uh-oh, we got a comment. <laughs> is your mic on? <laughs> Come on, who you want to? Go ahead. Check, so. check, check. Mm-hmm. Can you hear me? Oh, yeah. I don't have one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think, I, I I don't think the problem is um, finding a person attractive. I think the problem is is acting on it. Uh, mm -mm. I know people who get upset if their partner says, oh, that person is cute. Yeah, but you shouldn't be with that person in the first place if they're that insecure. If I can't walk down the street with you and, and, and um, find a girl attractive and can speak to you about it and say, hey, look, look at... You know, look at that girl booty or look, Listen. you know, it's being funny about it. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a problem. I'm one of those people. If you want to take it on a personal level, I'm one of those people when I'm in a relationship, whether it be with a guy or a girl, if I see a girl that's cute or she got a fat ass, I'd be like, babe, look, 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 look. Like I'm that person. And I won't be offended if you do the same thing for me, whether you're looking at another girl or if you're looking at a guy, uh -huh. whatever the case is, because I'm not, I don't even know if it's insecurity or just dumb, because why would you think that? they're not attracted to anyone ever again just because y'all are in a relationship. Like, do I go blind once we say, hey, I like you, I like you, you want to do this? Let's do this. Like, that's Some people stupid. is okay with being lied to, though. They want to be lied to. Mm. That's how a lot of, of not just women, but it's, it's mostly historically uh, women, but they stick around. Uh, they want to be lied to, you know? You, you know this guy is cheating on you. But he tells you a lie and you roll with it, you know? Yeah, but that's what I was saying, too, about, you know, being open and honest in your relationship because you can't change people at the end how of the day. How honest, though? What do you mean, how honest? If you're in a relationship with someone, right? Let's say me and you in a relationship, right? And I'm saying, I want you to tell me the truth. Now, I might have seen some things about you from day one that I was like, Mm, kind of skeptical about but i know people oh you know what i've known this person for a while or hey i'm gonna give them a chance i don't want to stereotype or mm, something bad happens or something that you feel a way about you kind of brush it off and leave it alone then something else happens further down the line and you overlook it here and then something else happens and you're like ah uh, and then you start to see things like the person gets more comfortable in being themselves because you know when you first start dating people some people put on a whole nother facade like you don't even know this person from the first day y'all met to when y'all broke break up and hate each other like it's two completely different people so you start noticing things about them and you overlook it because you're stuck on this idea that you have of them that says this is the person for me this is going to be it or you know what i'm saying like you're trying to give people chances even when they show you that you need to tell them to go <laughs> you know what i'm saying so or you, you need to go of either that, them, you need to either that, because a lot of people also have an issue with leaving. And on the topic of that, Angela Yee was saying something about how her parents are divorced, but they still live together. And I don't know if it was DJ Envy or Charlemagne who said, but your parents are happy. And she's like, yeah, but they're divorced. But they're like, but they live together. Yeah, because it's convenient. They're comfortable. And I was talking to a friend about how that. How old did they get divorced? I guess recently, or I'm not sure how recent, but they're divorced and they live together. So... Whatever the case is, I mean, she even said something to the extent that they can sell the house and buy a new house or whatever. But I guess they're still pl spitting the bills and, <laughs> you know, splitting the bills and it's working for them. So they're roommates, according to her. So, I mean, there's that. But I mean, like I was saying, I was talking to a friend the other day about relationships and how hard it is for some people to leave because of comfort. It's not always because you love the person that you're with. Some of y'all be dead over these relationships and you know this person is trash and you're like, ugh, but you're comfortable. Most people don't want to go back into the dating game. They don't want to start from scratch and get to know new people and be vulnerable to someone else. And you know what I'm saying? Get all into your feelings and you know like all the things that happen in the beginning you know asking all the questions and trying to figure out if these per people are being genuine like people don't want to deal with that so instead of you know finding a new evil you stick to the evil you know and that's comfort you know what i'm saying but like i say from time to time you can't grow in comfort you know what i'm saying so that it's toxic it becomes toxic and it gets worse so you start noticing more and more things and then you start getting real aggravated but like i said before 
the signs are usually there in the beginning before you even get to boyfriend girlfriend 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 boyfriend boyfriend (laughs) like whatever the case is before you even get past the talking stage you start noticing things and people like to turn a blind eye to that so if you see somebody that you know i'm saying y'all like each other y'all vibe and they done brought up one time hey how do you feel about threesomes hmm if you're not into threesomes you need to cut that shit right there no i don't like that don't even be like "Mm, i think about trying it one day then you're giving this person hope like you might want to get down with somebody one day and then they're like, but in the beginning you say, say no, you know, and then it becomes all these technicalities. So, uh, so, um, to, to go back to what I was saying about how open should you be? Right. Because <clears throat> if a per, if, if the guy's attracted to another girl and both of y'all is open to a threesome, like how, how does that work or conversation? That's why that's one of the first things I said. Open. But most girls would be like, yeah, I'm down for a threesome, but I got to pick the girl. Okay. That means they never pick the girl. Not necessarily because some girls aren't as forward. Some girls don't know how to approach a woman and say, hey, you want to have sex with me and my partner? You know what I'm saying? How are you going to pick the girl? So I feel like that's the perfect cop out. I understand what you're saying, but also it's not necessarily that they're going to go pick the girl. It could also be the guy can suggest or not even that. I know... I've been in a relationship before with a woman who wanted to have threesomes. I wasn't at a level that I am now to where I would be open to that. And I was just like, hell no, (laughs) fucking nobody else. But I was young. But you know what I'm saying? It could be a situation where one person, like, I'll pick the girl or I'll pick the other person. And they can suggest and you can be like, all right, yeah, I like them. You get me? But you know that's not what they mean. But that... It could be, though. That's not... You sound like... No. You sound like you're completely against this idea all around. Which idea? The fact that, you know, it can't happen if they're all the way honest. Um, I'm not against it, but I'm realistic. I think it would be three out of ten relationships that you can be extremely open and and... And it works like extremely, extremely open. If it's, it makes no sense to get into a relationship with someone that is not into threesomes. If you're into threesomes, mm-hmm. that is stupid. It is whatever that you're into. The other person needs to somewhat be into it or is okay mm-hmm. with experimenting. Now, if mm-hmm. they experiment and they don't like it, and it's a make and break situation for you, don't continue because you're only setting yourself up for future failures a year from now two years from now three years from now so i mean that's exactly what i was saying though because like i said some people might be like yeah i'll think about it i'm okay i'm not because they're trying to please the person or whatever the case is when you're setting yourself up exactly both of you are setting yourself up you know what i'm saying and i know that there are gay couples who do have threesomes like they're swingers they you know what i'm saying or like you know some gay boys they'll be wide married all the way and one might be verse or one's top one's bottom whatever the case is they might want to bring somebody else in because you know there's a stigma that men just have to have sex with everybody but you know what i'm saying and it works for them but like i said two consenting adults that are mature and know exactly what it is that they want from their relationship and they have an understanding. Now, I know quite a few couples who will be like, oh yeah, we can do threesomes, whatever, whatever, but it has to work. But you also have to understand that the person that you're bringing in has to understand their role as well as far as their participation in your relationship or in your sex. Because some people don't even know the difference between polyamory, swinging, and an open relationship. Like, there's so many different levels to it because swinging is me and you are together. We're just fucking other people. Like we're fucking, we're swapping partners. We're fucking people together, whatever the case is. Right. This is my take on it. This is not the Webster's uh, definition, <laughs> but, and then there's, you know, polyamory where we're just all in a whole relationship together. Me, you, her, him, she, we're just all in a relationship. I can be with them one day. I can be with you one day. You can be with them one day. Like, or we all living in the same house together, you know, like the, the people in those back bush <laughs> states that do that. But then we have the whole, you know, we just have one other girlfriend and it's just the three of us. It can be, it's so many different levels, but it's based on what you and your partner are comfortable with, right? And I talk about this because we talk about monogamy and the idea of monogamy. And there's some people who genuinely are completely okay with monogamy. And there's also some people who feel like, you know, 
we can be polyamorous so I can have two girlfriends, but you can only have me. Like I said before, that shit doesn't fly like that. This isn't, you know what I'm saying? This isn't those it relationships. It does fly like that if you're okay with it in your relationship. Yes. I think each relationship, it, it, it it's a, a case-by-case situation. So maybe a guy, maybe there's a guy out there that's okay with his girl having another guy, Right. Maybe definitely wasn't done with my statement. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> because on the back end of that, it's I have two girlfriends. You have just me, but you don't know about my other girlfriend. You feel me? So in an essence, that is cheating. No, sorry, that is cheating. That is cheating. That though. is cheating. That is cheating. If I don't un- accept and consent to the fact that you are emotionally or sexually involved with someone else, that is cheating. And a lot of people like to be like, oh, well, you never asked. A mission is betrayal. Because I talk about that also because you can say that, you know, you don't know what your partner is willing to accept. I'll be the first person to tell you all day, every day. You don't know what someone is willing to accept until you present them with a situation. So you can sit here and be like, oh, she's not going to be down for me, you know, having sex with someone else. Or he's not going to be down with me having sex with someone else. But you don't know that. But that's why I always say, you know, communicate. You talk about these things. Y'all talk about all types of dumb shit when y'all meet people. Talk about the things that genuinely matter to you. Okay? Like consenting adults. If y'all grown and y'all think y'all grown up to be out here having sex with Tom, Dick, Harry, Sally, and May, by all means. But live in your truth. Don't try to stifle yourself or try to, you know what I'm saying, alter who you are because someone else feels like you should be a certain way. Like if you you don't want to lose that person. No. It's like you know (laughs) maybe you see something in that person. Maybe you you don't you don't selfish. You don't want to lose it is, it is. It's selfish on both parts actually. Um, but maybe you just don't want to lose that person. Mm-mm. You 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 enjoy the comfort that person brings, so you you find yourself looking past. No, and then you end up miserable because you can't live your truth. Like that's true. No, that's selfish. And it's all about and it's all about the other person, um, how they react to and how open they they allow you to be, how free. Mm-hmm. They allow you to be things like that as well. So it's it's just two parts to it. It's- there are, but like I said, it's something that you should address in the beginning or in the early stages because you don't want to get down the line where you're talking about marriage and all this now. And then you're thinking, damn, I've only had sex with you all this time, but I really want to go have sex with the sucker. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like you said before, people have to go through their whole phase. Sometimes it's not necessarily a whole phase. You just want to have sex with other people. And nah, nah, nah. You got to go through your whole phase. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's this whole idea that I keep hearing that, you know, just because I cheat doesn't mean I don't love you. Now, my take on cheating is this. There's different forms of cheating. Now, you can fuck somebody one time and that was that. My bad. I fucked up. I had a moment of weakness, weak to the flesh, whatever the case is. All right. Cool. Then there's I keep fucking the same person over and over again. Uh, then there's I'm just fucking random people all over the place just different 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 people all the time right then we got the emotional cheaters who just you know they want to confide in someone else they want to find all the attention and all this fun stuff that's there are levels and there's some shit that I will definitely not deal with and that is probably first on the list like If you're seeking emotional and romantic comfort from someone else and attention from someone else, this relationship is over. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's one level of omission and betrayal and deceit and all that. So it's just like, nah. You know what I'm saying? Like, no. And then there's the one time. Okay, I fucked somebody one time. All right, whatever. Some people, like you said, they want to keep the person because they see that they're it's a good girl or it's a good guy. And, you know, he makes sure that, you know, the bills are paid and they love me and they support my dreams. And, you know, they're there for me. My parents love them, but I want to go have sex with other people. Like, I don't want to be with this person. Like, they're good for me, but I don't want them. There's a lot of situations that are like that. And like I said, y'all gonna have to live y'all truth. You know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, you're the only person that's gonna suffer from this. You're gonna hurt somebody else, but at the end of the day, you're the person living with going back and forth between two different lives, basically, because you can't be true to who you actually want to be with. And I can say this for people who are in the closet and are in relationships that, you know, are in heterosexual relationships because society or their family or their friends don't know or you feel like they won't accept that you're in 
that you're attracted to the same gender. Like, at the end of the day, whether they know or not, it's still your life and that's your business. It's necessarily their choice to tell you who or what you should be attracted to, what you should do with your life, your career, your sex, any of that. Like, live your live your life for you. You know what I'm saying? You're the one that came out of whatever womb or wherever. Like, you did that. You're going to be the one that gets buried or cremated or whatever way it is that you choose to go out. Or, you know what I'm saying? It's you. So while you're here, live your truth and enjoy your life. Like, you know what I'm saying? So if you feel like you should get married get married but don't get married because you got pregnant or you've been with this person for 10 years or you feel like your family will accept them or oh because they asked (laughs) or because it's the right time do you think that's still relevant in 2018 what's that uh people necessarily getting married because of the the, their parents or getting married for uh because i've been with you for eight years 10 years really yeah. I feel like this generation is a little bit more, um, <laughs> especially women, they're a little bit more independent, a lot more independent and not, and, and it's maybe not by choice. Maybe it's because of men, Where's they got mine? soft, mm-hmm. men got soft, they stopped taking up the responsibilities. <laughs> um, and when I say responsibilities as a man, we're not supposed to just, just pay the bills. Like men, we can wash the dishes too. We can clean the house too. We can do other things we could cook we could do other things hey. not to say i cook a lot i'm hey. just saying hey you realize this is an lgbt podcast it's not just about heterosexual couples oh true but <laughs> still, okay sorry sorry my bad but still it's, i think it still applies though yeah but I think it still applies because i know you say sorry to cut you off but i know you said lesbians what is it the u-haul yeah, after U-Haul. the second date they bring a u-haul truck they're ready to move in but wait but don't they stay together for a longer period of time than heterosexual relationships Depends on where in their life they are. Percentage. I'm the type of person I like percentage. Google it. So, it's like, but no, but like just just from your experience. lesbians, lesbians be in relationships. Like they be in relationships, and when they break up with one person, they in a next, next relationship. Re- but but do they do they stay with that person for a long period of time? I'm not talking about the bounce back. They, tr- I feel like they try to because you know, like I said before, women are nurturers. We're we're like for the most part, we're clingy. We like to be affectionate and things of that nature. But I feel like they do stay together for longer periods of time. But also keep in mind, it's women, estrogen, all them emotions. There's a lot of like lesbian fights. Be real as fuck. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? There's all of that. But they they stay together though. They they be in long lasting relationships. Bitches be together for like right. 15 so, fucking years. So I think it still applies then. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen, but I think it still applies then that I, I, this generation, this day and age, I don't think it's like that anymore where people is just getting married just because like oh, we've been together for eight years or we've been together or our parents, uh, my parents like you or mm-hmm. whatever. No, no. These kids is even moving out earlier, I feel like. Yeah. I mean, but then again, that's one demographic. There's other demographics where these things are still happening. You know, arranged marriages are still happening. Of course. Like, Come even on. in the United States. Like, I mean, somebody... Re- like, my coworker was telling me that their cousin is in an arranged marriage. It's fucking 32 years old. In 2018, and they're in an arranged marriage. Can't stand the husband for shit. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know what I'm saying? Like, they met, and it was, like, two weeks before the wedding type shit. Like... It's still happening. It's cultural for them because they're Indian, but at the same time, but they're Trini, but they're Trini though. They're Trini Indian. And I was just like, I didn't Black know Trini still getting shot. Of course, things is st- still <laughs> happening. Yes, but I, I, I think this generation, I give them a little bit more credit, especially women, for being more independent, um, producing more, uh, um, creating more. Not babies though, uh, apparently. Uh, I heard that there's like a really low <laughs> That's good. deficit. That's good. There's a deficit in babies being born. That's good. And there's all this huff huff about this. And I'm just like, y'all mad that people are out here making sure that they don't give birth when they're not ready to? Like, what are y'all doing? That's great. That's great. My my uh, grandmother had damn near 11 kids. Mine had nine that survived. There were a few <laughs> that passed because, you know, they old and medical advancements and right. things of that nature. Right, and I'm nature. not saying it's, a, it's a necessarily a, a horrible thing that she had 11 kids because I, I, I came out of that bunch. Uh, <laughs> but, <laughs> you see what I'm saying? But still. Quite a bit of 
older people have a lot of kids because I know someone else whose grandmother has nine and then someone else who's had 11 and I'm just like damn TV did a lot for y'all because y'all wasn't doing shit but fucking like what is this but I mean it's whatever like I said before marriage if you're down for marriage you're down for marriage there's some people that you know feel like marriage in the government form is a scam that's one aspect of it to look at it is and then <laughs> there's the other aspect of you know as long as it's me and you it's we're married and then there's you know what is it called common law marriage where if we're living together after a certain amount of years the state basically recognizes you as a union like you're married so it's not necessarily you know walking down the aisle or going to the court and signing papers in my opinion anyways that's not necessarily what marriage is that's not the whole idea of marriage it's not you know i'm saying this huge elaborate wedding or anything of the sort and i feel like a lot of people take away the sanctity of marriage because they're so stuck on this fairy tale idea that you know you know women want to be princesses and they want to have you know the gowns and the 50,000 guests and all white doves flying you know all of that fun shit I mean granted some people are down for that some people just want to go walk on the beach and say hey we're doing this we're doing this all right bet and (laughs) carry on with your life some people don't want to sign the paperwork you know what I'm saying some people might look at that as oh you're not necessarily committed to me because you don't want to be legally bonded to me you know again how you allow yourself to be in a relationship with a person that thinks that way like the, the the other person that you're in a relationship with They're not supposed to think 100% the way you think, but we got to connect some way, somehow, you know? Music. (laughs) You got to connect some way, somehow. So if if my values and and, and certain, certain way I look at things doesn't match up with yours then it's a problem save yourself and save the other person the headache exactly which is another reason why like i've always been very against divorce like i i mean i remember a point in my time where i was just like i'm never getting married you know and then there was the there was the rebellious phase where i was just like if i ever get married it's probably gonna be to a woman and then i had like my whole idea of you know marriage between heterosexual couples are usually less valued because look at the divorce rates you know what i'm saying look how often they break up and then there was the whole thought process that lgbtq people go through so much to get the right to get married that if they do get married they're going to stay together the divorce rates are lower because you know they went through so much to get to this point to have the right to get married so i was really like i've gone through my phases with my ideas of marriage and now i'm just like listen if you get married make sure it's what you both want to do and not because one person feels pressured or one person you know i'm saying just got tired of dating and just feel like okay this is it don't settle it's your, like I said before, it's your life. You live it for you. I mean, as selfish as it sounds, it's self. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's self. And on my topic of divorce, you know what I'm saying? I, if it's abusive, you saw the signs. But that doesn't mean that you should stay. If there are children involved, that does not mean you should stay. Like, people stay for all the wrong reasons. Like I said before, you know what I'm saying? If you need to get help. If you need someone to help you get out of a situation, get the help you need. If you need to be ostracized from the real world to escape this and you're able to do it, do it. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't stay in a situation that is abusive, that is harmful, that is in any way detrimental to you, whether it be physically, emotionally, mentally. Like, don't do not do it. If you have the strength or if you feel like, if you notice it, if you notice it and you see that it is a problem, deal with it. Stay away from it. Get away from it. Like, Like I said before, you see the signs. A lot of people try to act like, oh, my God, this just happened out of the blue. Oh, like, you know what I'm saying? Just pay attention to what's happening. Don't be blinded by the good times. Like, when shit gets rough, pay attention to that shit. You know what I'm saying? Look at how things happen. Think about the stories that people tell you also. Like, some people like to tell stories and flip it. Like, oh, that person was crazy and da-da-da. It's like, okay, but what happened before they got crazy? You get me? Like, have conversations like be honest with yourself if you're not gonna be honest with nobody else you know what i'm saying but i made a statement about divorce earlier and you know i'm gonna switch subjects and this is gonna get real emo real quick but um with everything going on recently i really have to bring this to light it's not like it's something that's in the dark but for those who may have forgotten suicide is a real thing it's something that happens 
<sighs> daily. Sadly, I didn't like I honestly I purposely did not look up the statistics because that's not something I don't want that reality. I know it's a reality, but I don't want physical numbers to show me just how many people are taking their lives because this world is shit. You know what I'm saying? Like and I hate was it last week and the week before two celebrities committed suicide. Right. Allegedly. I don't know. I was not there. And I've heard a lot of people saying dumb shit like all that money you got and you kill yourself really the fuck does that mean you're saying oh you get to travel the world and you you're on tv and you're killing yourself what reason do you have like who whose place is it to say that this isn't too much for someone else you know what i'm saying just because you have money you have your own brand you have a tv show you have all of this you look like on the outside your life is well put together one of the stories I heard was that Kate Spade's husband filed for divorce or presented the idea of divorce or something of the sort. This lady is a mother. She's a mother. Yes, she's a household name. She has, you know, her brand of purses and, you know, all her fashion things that she does. And somewhere along the line with everything that you guys see and covet, it wasn't enough for her. Something went wrong and she decided this was it. This this was it. So, you know what I'm saying? Make sure you guys are checking on the people you care about. <laughs> Check on your friends. Be nice to people. Don't, you know what I'm saying, just be a dickhead because it's free. Like, I talk about this all the time. Like, I'm a sarcastic asshole, but at the core of it, like, I'm, I'm actually nice. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I actually care about humanity as a whole, even though y'all fail me on so many levels. Like, just care about people. Like, just have a little bit of empathy and realize that just because someone's always smiling does not mean that they're actually happy check on the quote-unquote strong friend because they're always there for you who is actually there for them if you are the strong friend and shit's getting hard for you reach out to somebody you know what i'm saying talk to someone i talk about therapy on here i mean you guys can text talk <laughs> video chat the options are there if you don't want to do that reach out to somebody somebody i mean there's chat rooms you guys yes people still have chat rooms there's group discussions there's helplines there's tip lines there's so many different options you know what i'm saying write a letter to yourself like there's so many ways to get out these things like choose choose an outlet go get a tattoo like you know what i'm saying like there's so many ways that people can deal with these things and a lot of it is things that are bottled up that they just never got to express and it just got to be too much. So even if you feel like someone looks like they're always together and they never complain about anything, that's probably the person you should be checking on the most. OK, like your opinion on suicide as someone who isn't suicidal is not valid to someone who is suicidal. I'll say that again. For you, a person that is not suicidal, your opinion on suicide is not valid to someone who is suicidal. If someone reaches out to you and expresses thoughts and feelings of suicide, don't belittle them. Don't tell them you dumb. Why you? Why, that's stupid. Why would you want to do that? Don't don't do that. Listen to them. <laughs> Sometimes that's all they need. Sometimes they don't even need advice. They just need somebody to listen. You know what I'm saying? Like whether they're wealthy, they're famous, well traveled, the household name, popular. You know what I'm saying? They have money. Whatever the case is, no one has the right to say that they should or shouldn't be suicidal. Like. That's not your place. If you can be there for someone, be there for them. If you don't know how to be there for someone, suggest, suggest things. There's suicide.org. They have numbers for literally everything. You know what I'm saying? There's suicide prevention hotline for the United States. Their phone number, for those who don't know, is 1-800-273-8255. That's for the United States. And they have... <laughs> on suicide.org they have a website and they have the phone number for military veterans they have hotline in spanish they have you know what i'm saying suicide they have a talk line they have text there's a text number for people who can't hear tty like there's options i posted on instagram the other day the number for um lgbt youth the suicide hotline for them which is one eight six six for you trevor um there's <laughs> there's a suicide hotline for jamaica um, for those who didn't know suicide prevention hotline in jamaica is 1-888-429-5273 there's uk it's 
Um, there's a phone number for Trinidad and Tobago suicide hotline, 868-645-2800. Barbados suicide hotline is 246-429-9999. Bahamas Crisis Center, 242-328-0922. There's a number that you can call. You know what I'm saying? There's, I'm not going to sit here and read out every single suicide hotline number, but you guys can find all of those numbers that I listed and much, much more on suicide.org. Or you can Google it. Type in the country, type in the issue, type in whatever, everything you can Google. You know what I'm saying? If you go on suicide.org, they have an international tab that you can find. If you're somewhere else in the world that I did not mention and you need someone to talk to, it's a toll free number. Call it. You know what I'm saying? Even if you call and you just don't say anything, you just sit there. Someone is there to deal with this. Like someone is trained. Someone has experience with this. You know what I'm saying? If you need to cry, like just <laughs> there are options. There are options. And I mean, it sucks. I know it sucks, but it gets easier. I can tell you from experience, it does get easier. I mean, you might feel like you're trapped. You might feel like there's nothing going to be better. This is the worst thing ever in life. And you know what I'm saying? This is it for you, but it's really not. You know what I'm saying? It's, it gets better if you're under 18, you're not old enough to support yourself. Listen, work at what you can work at right now and make sure that you get out of it. Like, don't don't just end it because you'll never know what could have come. Okay? Um, just love yourself, live your truth, and just, you know, just try just try. And <laughs> I'm sorry to end the show on such a somber note, but we're going to wrap this up. Please don't forget to follow us on all the social medias, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. It's Pointless Talks. Subscribe to our podcast listening on um, SoundCloud, Apple Music, Google Play Music. The list goes on, but those are the most popular ones that I've been noticing. If you like us, rate us, give us five stars, leave all the positive feedback, keep on a bad mind feeling to on a self. And just like every other week, whether you got here on purpose or by fate, thank you again for tuning in to the Pointless Talks podcast.